Hi, and welcome to another wonderful Monday. And that could only mean one thing. The Tracker is back here with us. The only show that allows us to go globetrotting while we actually stay in the studio. I know, I know. That's how it works. Today, the show is packed. There's a lot to talk about. Sule Ali Muntari, whenever he's on the show, I'm hyped. This time around, he says that he has unfinished business with the Black Stars. He's been training with Ghanaian Premier League side Accra Hearts of Oak. We'll also tax on Andre Dede Ayu and his move to Turkey. What does this mean for him? Is this the chapter that will finally see Dede Ayu unleash his full potential on the world? Kojo Asamoah has been featuring heavily in preseason for Inter Milan Football Club. Patrick Chumesi is in the mix as well. So like I promised, it's a very, very packed show. We'll take a break. We'll come back. And then I have something special for you as well. Hi, and welcome back to The Tracker. And I have my partner in hip-hop, my partner in sports, and these days my partner in basketball, Nathan Kwao, in studio with me. Hi, Nathan. Hi, it's my first time here. Nice to have you on The Tracker. <laughs> but just like I said, there's something special on the show for you today. You know, there are a lot of times in lives where you are hit by down moments. It happens to us, the working class. It happens to athletes. It happens to even children. I mean, there's the urge to give up on your dreams. There's the urge to give up on work that you're assigned to but we have a little motivational video for you today about what you should do with regards to the times when you are really really down and you need some spark from somewhere to get you up again so let's take our motivational video we'll come back and then we'll unpack the conversation let me tell you something you already know the world ain't all sunshine and rainbows it's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside, and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. The margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves, they want to tell you you can't do it. Don't be afraid to fail. You can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. You have to believe that something different can happen. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. That most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. it may sound to the people make a choice like right? just decide what it's going to be who you're going to be how you're going to do sometimes when you are just at the brink of giving up 
maybe that's when greatness is about to be thrust upon you. So it's essential that in life you keep your motivation and never give up. And of course, that introduces us to our first gentleman on the show, Andre Dede <laughs> Ayu. Nathan, he's a man you know very well. You've spoken to him personally. Yeah. You followed his journey along the road. Now he's made it to Fenerbahce Football Club. Loan from Swansea after spells with West Ham and Co. Yeah. They didn't work out for the young man. He struggled with a sense of position as he has developed. Yeah. And that's usually the opposite of what most footballers go through. Now he's in Turkey on loan and Fenerbahce promised that he was the guy that was going <laughs> to make their season tick. Yeah. What's the road looking like for Andrea Ayu now? I mean, is this the final chapter that he must get right? Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, if, if you look at his progression as, as a player, I think that he can look at, I think, his last two seasons with Marseille and, and that first season with Swansea as three of the best times he's had in terms of club football. Of course, he won an, an yeah. under-20 World Cup, so that's at a national team level. So, yes, he can look at his career and point out to those three seasons as three very good ones. And then it didn't go too well at West Ham, and he's mm -hmm. had an opportunity to, to go at it again, to play some top-flight football feature in the Champions League. So I think he needs to look at this opportunity as one that's, that is being handed to him mm. um, on a silver platter, because not a lot of teams... Not a lot of players... Will, yeah, not a lot of players. Yeah, will, of the you know, Premier League you, you are in the Championship yeah. and you're already heading out to Fenerbahce. Yeah. So I think he, <clears throat> he should look at this opportunity as a good one. And he needs to take it with, with both hands. He's been working hard with Swansea, and the people right. at Swansea have commended his attitude in preseason. He's worked hard. He's kept himself in shape. I'm sure at the back of his mind, he was always priming himself yeah. for a move like this. He's had that move, and he needs to take that opportunity. You talk about position. I think that one other thing that has not helped Andrea you is this lack of clarity about what he can do now as a player. And, and I think there's certain times, in that season at Swansea, the first mm -hmm. one, and in those games when he played for West Ham, it was yeah. very obvious what kind of player he had become. He was no more a player with enough pace to bomb up and down the, the flanks mm. and cause problems. He's become a very good second striker, if I can put it that way. Somebody who's lurking for the loose ball. Does he feel in. like that himself? I think he does. I think he does. But maybe there's this... I won't call it fear, but mm. maybe he just wants to be part of the team. So wherever he's giving whether he's giving a duty or something to do, he will fulfill those tasks and then in the process mm. get a few goals here and there. I, I find that that's becoming a worrying trend for a lot of our players where they cannot say that this is my preferred position, this is where the manager needs to play me or I'm off somewhere else. All I, I hear these days are, <laughs> well, I'm a footballer and I'll play everywhere I'm asked to play. I, I, I think it's, it's out of uh, uncertainty because they may sense that I mean, this team here yes, is competition. Why should I say no to an opportunity? Yeah. And my chance will eventually come. The chance may not come eventually. And, <laughs> you know, when you look at a player like Koja Soma, he's yeah. been completely reprogrammed as a player. He's no more, he can't play. I don't think he can function as well as in central midfield yeah. as he would have done four or five years ago. I think that ship has sealed. I think he's become a very efficient <coughs> left sided player, whether as a left midfielder, left yeah. wing back, left back, whatever it is you want to call it. So I think our players into a bit more forthright. But like I said, it's just a lack of... I won't call it bravery. It's just mm. um, discretion. Being yeah. a better part of valor, like I always say. Realizing that, look, why should I fight the system if I can stay in the system right. and play in a different role and still be part of this team and hopefully one day I get to play my rightful position. Interesting stuff there. But again, Andrea you himself has been sharing his thoughts with regards to... Um, what he expects to achieve with this Fenerbahce deal. Let's, let's have a feel of what he had to say on the day when he was unveiled to the press uh, in Turkey and also to the fans of the club. So um, the club wants to, to, to get to the other level and um, this project was something which touched me and I believe in. So when we, we started discussing and we started moving, I, I, I felt that the project was very serious and that um, the, the future of, of Fenerbahce is very bright. So I wanted to be part of this big project which is, which is starting. So I know that uh, there's a lot of exp expectations in, in the club from the fans and uh, that's why I'm here to, to make sure that uh, uh, inshallah everything goes well. 
Andrea Yu says that he has a lot of expectations for his time in Turkey. I can tell you that Ghanaians have a lot of expectations for Andrea Dede Ayu. Hopefully, those expectations will manifest into performances on the pitch. Now, this young chap I'm about to tell you about is interesting. Kasim Nuhu Adams. His, his star has gone from 0 to 100 really quickly. Once upon a time, he was playing on loan in Mallorca. And he was playing with Real Madrid's Marco Asensio. He has a very interesting story about his time in Mallorca with Marco Asensio, but that's a story for another day. This time around, he's had a successful spell in Switzerland and has made that all-important jump to the next level. Hoffenheim Football Club in the German Bundesliga. He will be playing also in the Champions League next season. Nathan, four caps for the Black Stars, two goals already yeah. for Kasim Nuhu Adams. He's won the Swiss Championship. Now he's off to Germany to further his career and see what the world holds. Yeah, and when you look at his story, it's taking him the long route, yeah. the, the scenic route to the top. But sure. sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need that. You, I think he was in Spain for what, four years? Yep. Playing lower All division, over the place, six months, one you know, year. So sometimes you need that. I'm not saying every footballer needs to travel around, no, but sometimes you need to rack up miles, yeah. and those things will teach you the valuable lessons you need so that when you are handed a bigger opportunity, you respect those opportunities yeah. and, 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 and make the best of them. And I think Asim Nu is one good example of hard work, biding your time, and getting through to the, to the big leagues and showing what you can do. I watched him mm -hmm. play a few times for young boys in, in, in the Europa League. Um, and, and, I, and I thought he was good. And when he played for the Black Stars, he felt very comfortable. I think on one of his very few starts, he scored against Saudi Arabia. And then I think scored against Iceland, if memory serves. But whatever it is, you can tell that he's worked hard. And I think he deserves the move to Hoffenheim. It's not, it's not young boys like Bayern Munich standard. But it's good. It's mm. young boys up to the German Bundesliga. <laughs> another place where you can grow and develop. Yeah. And, and if you are good enough and you excel, you have the big clubs coming in. And Germany is already a place that is known for grooming talent. And so I'm very delighted that he takes this opportunity. The demands, of course, at Hoffenheim are higher yeah. now than young boys. But if he applies himself like he's done and if he's committed, this should work out really well. You talk about this working out really well. Now talk about a young defender who has not had the most exposure, <laughs> having to make the jump all of a sudden into Champions League football. What does that mean for him and how should he look to take this opportunity? It, it, it's always tough. You know, the demands are higher, coaches are expecting a lot more, the competition is a bit more cutthroat. Mm. But he has to do the things that have helped him get here. Work hard, do yeah. your bits. When you get onto the pitch, keep it simple, but still make a statement with whatever it is you do. And if Hoffenheim, I don't think that they went out to <coughs> sign him on a whim. I think they yeah. studied him and they felt that he could help. So yeah. if they've brought him in, they will give him the opportunity. He needs to take those chances. And he needs to enjoy himself. That's the most important thing. I think that most young players sometimes get too consumed yeah. with trying to imp you, Yes, you have to impress. But you see, when you enjoy what you do, the rest of it comes easily. Kylian mm. Mbappe is a fantastic example. From true. He's, to PSG. he's not thinking too much about what I need to do. He's just playing. Yep. He does what comes to him naturally. And by true. doing so, we've seen what he can do. He's the best young player in the World Cup. So I think Asim Nuhu needs to take those opportunities. Already, he's part of the national team. So that headache shouldn't weigh too much on him. He just needs to prove to Kwesi Apia on a very regular basis, why he needs to keep getting those call-ups. But I think it's a good shot, and, and he needs to take it. He needs to enjoy himself and embrace mm. the challenge. Finally, on him before we go, you, you, you spoke about the national team. Now, does he have the markings of somebody who can make that centre-back spot his own for a long time to come and perhaps maybe even expand his leadership scope as an individual? I, I think so. I, I think because here, um I don't think he's experimenting now as he was like six months ago. I think he's figured out largely what, what he, he wants. wants. Yeah. And once Casino is <laughs> featured in the last few games, clearly Casino is part of what Kwesiapia wants to do. Mm. And so I expect that he will be part of that team. He will grow as a player. Yep. He will grow in his leadership capacity. Because when you play as a center back, there's, I think there's this default leadership role that you assume, commanding yeah. your back line, commanding a goalkeeper, and commanding yeah. the players in front of you. Mm. And if he can work his way into the team well, he will become a keeper. I don't know if he will become captain <laughs> eventually, but I think he, he, he looks like a player <coughs> who will be part of Chris Apia's plans going forward, barring any unforeseen circumstance. Yeah, so that's Kasim Nuhu there on your screens there. A defender with an eye for the goal. So um, every time he gets the opportunity to be able to 
gets in the thick of things and gets himself a goal. He always makes sure that he makes a nuisance of himself among the pack. So Kasim Nuhu there, just ensuring that he keeps himself among the goal scorers. Let's let's now um, turn our attention to Patrick Trumessi. Patrick Trumessi had a what, what I call a weird summer because <laughs> he had this very outstanding season with Astana mm -hmm. in Kazakhstan. He scored well close to 20 goals all, in all competitions. And then all of a sudden, he makes a move to a team that is struggling to pay players. And I'm saying this knowing that Astana wow. are one of the richest yeah. clubs out there in their side of the world. Now, how do you move to a team that usually struggles to pay salaries like Deportivo Alaves? Last season, they literally struggled to stay afloat in the Premier Division. It's a weird move for me, Nathan. It, it is, but I think he's... I think in his mind, he may be done with his time at Astana and mm. probably tell himself, there's nothing I've more... I've made enough money? Probably. There's nothing more to achieve here. So he wants to move on, play in the bigger leagues and hopefully yeah. hopefully pray that yeah. he gets a, a better chance at showing the rest of the world what he can do. Yes, he's been in the... I won't call it the big headlines, but last season in the Europa League, he scored a few goals and he got talked about every now and again mm. when Astana was mentioned. Of course, he, he had a team that had Junior Cabananga Top scorer from the last Afcon yep. in there, so yep. yes, he was playing with some some good quality. He goes to join Mubarak Wakaso, I think, um, at Alaves. Yes, mm -hmm. um, but it will be a tough one. He needs to prepare for a, a very difficult time because the team is lacking yeah. quality. They they finished 14th <coughs> and they didn't come together too well. But that's the challenge he has chosen to embrace. So like I said, maybe he's just going there to excel individually and pray for a next move to a team of a higher standing in Spain or wherever it is. Interesting thoughts there from Nathan on Patrick Tumesi. But one of the... I, I, I don't like doing comparisons. So I like to stay away. But Yao Yeboah used to be one of those guys that I thought would have hit the big time by now. Played for Manchester City. Uh, was loaned out a couple of times. He played in the Spanish Segunda last season. This season again... He's back in the Segunda. Now, the peculiar thing is, he didn't feature regularly when he played in the Segunda last season. But he signed for Numancia Football Club and he scored a brace yesterday when they were in action. Nathan, is it, is it too early <laughs> to start raising eyebrows over Yao Yeboa and how he cannot seem to land a spot on, quote-unquote, a credible team? Well... Look, he was never ever going to get minutes at Manchester City. That yeah. we do know. Yeah. I think Holland was a fantastic place for him. Had, um, which team was it? I, I think it was FC20. FC20, actually. Yes. yes. Had FC20 secured him on a permanent deal for Manchester City, I think that would have been a better idea. That's the most football he's actually played. His yes. time at FC20. Yes. yes, but it looks like they couldn't settle on anything. He went back. Mm -hmm. And now I think he signed permanently for Numancia. Is that a good move? I think for his own progression, it is. Yeah, you'd expect him to play at a higher level, and I agree with you totally. He needs to play at a higher level. But when he's not getting the opportunities there, why not play for a team where you are guaranteed a bit more? Mm. You know, a few more opportunities, Allow some, cons some more consistency, and you will grow as a player. And, and if he does that, I don't think that he'll be there for what, a season, two seasons max. He should be off signing off for a team that will realize his worth and allow him to play. What delights me, though, is that he's not too far away from the thoughts of the national team. And I suspect that national team considerations may be one of the reasons why he's done this move, because mm. he needs to play regularly. It doesn't matter which level you play at. If you are playing regularly, you are sharper than somebody who's warming the bench at a grade A club. And that's True. something we will never deny. So, so I'm <coughs> happy that he's made this move, even though I wish that he were playing for a team of a greater standing. But if you get the minutes, and if those minutes will ensure that he gets to play for his country, which adds to his stock, let's not forget that if you play for your country a lot more, your value goes up in the transfer yeah. dynamics. And it helps you to land bigger teams and a bit more space and, and, and time to do your thing. So I'm delighted for him. I hope he takes the opportunities and quickly finds an exit to a bigger club and then I think he, you'll be happier with yeah, you are playing for a team of, as you put it, a more credible standing. I mean, he, he, he visited us in the studios yeah. a few months ago yeah, on Sports Panorama. Very humble guy. I mean, he seems to have his head screwed on. You, you reckon that his major problem is just coaches not giving him yes. playing time? I suspect so. I mm. suspect so. Um, even when he spoke with us in that interview, yeah. he... He sounded really stressed out, and I could pick that. He wanted the opportunity. I remember I even had an interview with him over the phone yeah. where he was lamenting all these fake stories that 
Pep Guardiola had spoken to him and that he said he was going to get him minutes. He really didn't like the idea because he was talking about how much the people at Manchester City were unhappy with those reports because okay. those things tend to be counterproductive. You may feel that you are putting out your case in the media. It kind of tightens the noose around your neck, literally, and you don't get to play. So he was very stressed out. He just wants to play. He just wants a place where he can show his talent. And he knows that if he gives it everything... He will get the opportunity. On the flip side, though, now his skill set, and we've got to talk about that, his skill set is not one that is extremely unique yeah. and we can't find in Spain. We can find 10,001 players like him. What he can do is to apply himself a bit more mm. just to get noticed. And I think he has that discipline. If he gets the opportunity, <clears throat> this should work out. So, yeah, your boy definitely has a lot to do with regards to returning to the limelight. Um, he's been touted for what? Big things in the past. He's featured for the junior side of Manchester City. He's been on loan. Now he's in the Spanish Segunda. Hopefully, he can take advantage of this opportunity and then get back to where uh, he once was. But let's talk about perhaps my most favorite person on the show today. Sule Ali Muntari. <laughs> Sule Ali Muntari. Sule Ali Muntari. I said the name three times. That's how serious he is. Portsmouth, Inter Milan. AC Milan, he's been everywhere. Yeah. The man has been everywhere. Guess where he's been in the past couple of weeks? He's been training with Accra Hearts of Folk, Ghana Premier League side who, of course, are not doing anything these days uh, due to number 12 and its fallout <laughs> issues. But Sula Ali Mutari has been training with Accra Hearts of Folk. And uh, look, Accra Hearts of Folk players and officials alike are absolutely over the moon to have Mutari in their midst. But Mutari himself happens to have a very interesting ambitions. Now, at age 33, the last time we saw Montari play was for Deportivo. And that was in the Spanish Primera. Yes, that's the last time we saw Sule Montari play. He uh, was in the Spanish Primera playing under Clarence Sedov. That deal expired. Now he is back home in Ghana, hoping that he can roll up his fitness and get on the roster before the new season's kick off around the various leagues. But he also says that, look, as for the national team, I did not sign off the way I wanted to. So he wants to come back to the Black Stars and ensure that he will sign off properly. At age 33, Montari says that the national team dream is definitely not over. I know that some of my best memories of the Black Stars were kind Ketsi of Sule Montari. Nathan, is that <laughs> enough reason to believe that Montari has enough in the tank to offer some to the Black Stars? Um... Well, I mean, he says he still has some in the tank. We'll have to take him up on his word. Will, will he get a call up? I, I think that's the question, rather, because you can say that. We can all say that. I mean, you can say you want to. <laughs> I can say I want to call I, up to I, the I black was, stars. But I think it's, yeah. it's all dependent on Kuskwisi up here. But I think that situation is a little tricky, especially if you know their history. That, you know, that ties the two men yeah. together, the episode yeah. in Brazil. It just didn't work well. So you don't know if... But he's apologized. Up, Oh yes, of course. You know, of course. I'm, I'm never against his his readmission. Let, let bygones be bygones. Yes, I I think if Chris Yapia feels he has a need for Montari, he won't give him a call up. What he, the player needs to be fit, he needs to be active. That's the mm. most important thing. And the head coach has insisted that he will only bring players who are active. So, so the Ali Montari, of course. I mean, I think he has enough experience to share with the team. I don't know if. He'll get a prominent role in this new look Black Stars team. I can't tell. And I don't know what Chris Yapia has in mind. But he, mm. he's got some crucial lessons. Some very important lessons he can share with yeah. the youngins coming up. And, uh, you know, I mean, you never know. He could be called back. That's throw, throw in this. AFCON qualifiers are upon us again. Ghana have Montari, Thomas Partey, and Kujua somewhere in the mix. How does that look compared to, say, um, a Thomas Partey... Maybe could you ask uh, maybe uh, and a free aqua or a Benezo for I mean contrast and compare. Well, well I mean if if you look at the, the new look midfield that Chris Yapia put out ever since he walked in, especially when he decided to switch things with the new yeah. players, you can tell that the team played quicker, a bit more dynamic, they had some verve around them. Yeah. You have to admit that players like Philip Munta are a little slow now. They've lost a bit of pace. That that you have to admit. Mm. The experience is still there, so it's it's good to have them around. Would I start Sule Ali Muntari in an intense qualifier? I don't think I would, but I'd keep him around. Come off the Impact bench. Impact, sir. Come off the bench. Let him do a number for me. Because some of these decisions are tough and hard, but you have to believe in the kind of project you are mm. building. Mm. I mean, if you bring him in, you are giving him 
top minutes at the, at the expense of other players. What are you telling these other players? You tell them you want to build a new team and yet some of the old faces are there. So it's nice to have players like Kujar Samoa and Suli Ali Muntari back. But I'd only have them around, one as impact subs, two to help this team through difficult times because they are experienced. And give them the minutes. When you feel they have a solution to a problem, yeah. throw them in and let them provide that solution for you. Finally, on that particular note, on a scale of 1 to 100%, how realistic do you think his chances are? About 40%. 40%. Yeah, 40%. Hmm, interesting stuff out there. So Sule Ali Mutari might not be out of contention totally with regards to making it to the Black Stars. <laughs> confession, confession. I know that I want to see Sule Mutari back in the Black Stars. That 30, 35 yarder against Uruguay. It was on my birthday, Nathan. I, 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 I totally understand I still remember. That. I mean, even though it was a day that... Eventually, I mean, but, 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 up a lot but, but, of pain. But, but Sule has scored. Look, he scored some screamers. I mean, He's the guy for the spectacular. Czech Republic, Ghana, Guinea in the opening game of the Afcon. I think he scored a few other yeah. goals in that tournament. So, yes, he, his his quality, his he, quality, his quality, and he's that type of quality that I do firmly believe is sort of timeless. I mean, look, the bullet shot, the ability to pass the ball, and that bravado that he brings to the pitch, that never ages for me. But we'll see. The conversation will get even more juicier when we, when we get back from this particular break. We have a lot more to talk about. Daniel Amati has been featuring for his club side Leicester City in preseason. We will see if this means a light at the end of the tunnel for the young man. minutes every weekday catching up with all the trending social media conversations of the day if you tweet it we'll read it we might just even skype you just you know no matter your situation you can rise to the top. absolutely you really and can. it's interesting that he wrote this article on the 17th of june and on the 18th of june yesterday he actually scored two goals Woo! in the belgium world cup meet 30 minutes is all it takes so use the hashtag three zero minutes on social media to catch our attention Join the most interactive social media TV show weekdays at 5 p.m. only on City TV. Tune in to the Point of View Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. as Bernard Avlet takes the news further. He will bring the right guests, ask them the relevant questions, and get you the real insights you need on the big stories for the day. The Point of View with Bernard Avlet. Monday and Wednesday nights, only on CTTV. You are still watching the tracker here on City TV. Um, it's a lot to talk about. Let's move to another very interesting young man. We lambasted him and we said everything we possibly could when he decided that he wanted to leave the Belgian Pro League for China. Tianjin Teda is where he plays his football. Left-footed um, player, Frank Achampong, he's quite the player. He's already scored 10 goals for his Chinese Super League club. I don't know where he goes from here or what this means for him, but... For a player who's playing in China, he definitely is having a lot of fun, Nathan. Yeah, um, you mentioned that decision to leave Anderlecht. It was bizarre, but I, I, I think he took that decision purely because of the finances. Um, I mean, after Samoa should we even be questioning anybody <laughs> moving to China I, or to the goal? Well, I mean, you, you, the other players, I mean, Cedric Bakambu, for example. Earlier today, I, I read yeah. a story about Cedric Bakambu. I he didn't get why people criticize him for leaving the RL and heading to China. He says he's having fun there. So maybe there is some exciting Making thing happening. Making truckloads of money as maybe well. Maybe there is some exciting thing happening in China that we don't know about. Maybe you and I should go and sign for a Division 3 team. I know I, know I can play in the Chinese league. You know. <laughs> you know, but, but whatever it is, um, 
again, he's getting to play. Yes, mm. I know it's a far cry or it's a world away from the bright lights of, of Anderlecht where you're playing in Brussels, there's the Champions League thing you get to enjoy and all of that. But players sometimes make some of these decisions and if he's playing and he's happy and he's scoring, why not? Let's not forget that he hasn't still gone out of the national team selectors and their attention. He's mm. not gone away from that at all. He's played Ghana's last friendly against um, Iceland. He yeah. played, I think he scored, I'm not too sure. But he's still featuring and he's getting his goals, getting his minutes. So we just have to wait and see the impact. I always say that the best way to judge a player if he's moved is how is his impact, for example, for his national team? Is yeah. he still efficient? Is he not efficient? Then you can judge. But if he's enjoying himself, why not? Um, I think we need to expect a lot more from him. Maybe I think a better judge of his talent would be the Asian champions. That is, should Tianjin Tiana even get to that level? Mm. If they make it there eventually, how well will he play? How important will he be? If, if he can break that, you know, I, I, I think he's good. You talked about what to expect from him and I mean, is he somebody we've been underrating? Because he's scored 10 goals already. He's a winger. And the Chinese league started not too long yeah. ago. Um, I, don't, I don't think so, to be honest. I mean, it's not like when he plays for Ghana, he's like the most prolific scorer or sets up truckloads of goals. He's a great, efficient guy to have around. But when you play in his position, you, you kind of expect something you know, from him. When, yeah. when you have wingers... What do you expect from them? Good crosses and assists. And I don't think he has a lot of those when it comes to the Black Stars. And I think he needs to do a lot more. When he plays for Ghana, sorry, we need to experience or we need to experience his impact. That, I think yeah. that's what it should be. We need to see that Frank Achampo is playing and he's making things happen. He's influencing play, setting up goals, trying himself you know, for goal. So we just have to wait, like we've established, the qualifiers resume later this year. And all these guys who are getting new deals and are moving on and scoring will get to show all of us in person when they come to town or when they are away on the continent on assignment, how well they really are faring in terms of their clubs. Mm. Interesting thoughts there on uh, Tedas Frank Achampo. I think he will definitely be one of the standout players when it's all said and done this season in the Chinese Super League. But let's, let's now talk about Kojua Samoa. We, you mentioned him in your earlier submissions. Yeah. You, you spoke about how he has nearly lost the DNA of a <laughs> midfielder and he's all about playing on the left-hand side. But I've seen him feature twice in the whole in midfield in preseason for his club yeah. side in Milan. I mean, is Spalletti trying to tell us anything? Are we going to get the old Kojua Samoa back? It's very possible. You have to admit that Inter's flank seem to be very solid. Um, because even if they play a wing back, it is Ivan Perisic who plays, especially on the left hand side, crossing with his left foot. And so if Kojua Samoa will get a running in this team, it's very likely that he may have to play back in midfield. And maybe Spalletti is reprogramming the player and allowing him to function. Um, in a position, you know, that is good. And like I've established, because Inter Milan seems to have this overload, especially on the left hand side, they seem to have enough personnel to deal with that. So that's why he may be featuring in the middle of the pack. But it's, it's nice to see that he's playing in midfield again. Um, I hope psychologically he's overcome the barriers of injury and the difficulty of coming back and, and going back and forth mm. to the doctor's table. If he's overcome that, then we should expect a Kojua Sama who will be feeling very liberated and then can help Inter do bases. Remember, they've brought in Rajana Ingolan, so yeah. that's, that's already a midfielder of, of a high standard, and Koja Samoa has been brought in because there is the belief and hope that he will get it right, and I think Inter is a good place. He needs to take the opportunities. You can't stress on this enough, that if you are giving a chance like this, take that opportunity, remind the manager that you are good enough to start, and probably better than any other midfielders he has. Well, so, like you said, back in midfield for him, he should look to make this his own again. Are you uh, looking forward to seeing him back with the Black Stars? It's been such a long time. Well, he says he, 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 he's and coming he, back. He's been promising for a long <laughs> so time. So we just have to take him at his word then. And let's see mm. how well um, he will fare with it. I, I think because the, there are a few weeks of club football to play before yeah. national teams reconvene, I think he will use those few weeks to actually process the decision and then maybe sign on that permanently and say, okay, I'm coming back mm. um, to the national team. I think it will depend on how much he plays for Inter, the kind of state he's in mentally. If he's feeling yeah. good, why not? I think that if he's not enjoying the season, I think he mm. may put that return on hold. But once he says he will come back, I think Kwesiapia needs to watch him and watch him carefully, yeah. assess his performances, and try to figure out where it will work. You see, because, like I said, let's not forget, Kwesiapia has a project that is ongoing, and I do not know Mm -hmm. 
any of these midfielders he, he has employed ever since he came back in the new look team in the new look team have failed him i don't think so i think that lots of the midfielders centrally have done their job and have done it yeah. well so because someone needs to prove to the manager yeah. or to Chris Yapia that if you bring me in i'm bringing you 20 percent extra value than mm. midfielder a or midfielder b let's let's stay on him i, I want to expand that conversation now from where you stand is he a box-to-box -box midfielder is he back as a number 10 because i always felt as if when he was first unleashed onto the scene he was a guy who could dribble he was a guy who had a punch of a shot and he was a guy who actually relished taking on one-on-one -on -one opportunities you think that he's basically evolved as a player because of the roles he's been given or he still kept some of the old attributes we've known him to have I, 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 well i mean his technical ability is never in doubt even when he's played on the left you can tell that there's still some very sharp thinking yeah. some good running and all that what I think he has done more to himself is to be a very safe player. Um, I mean, he's never been the greatest risk taker and yeah. he's even worsened by what he's done with himself, especially in terms of a playing position in the last few years or playing on the left for Juventus. So I think he still has those qualities. Um, where does he fit best? I don't think he excels directly behind a forward in a number 10. I think that slightly withdrawn, say, to an eight. Mm. where he's seeing a bit more of the pitch like a De Bruyne type kind of player where he's seeing more of the pitch and yeah. can dictate the play. What I'd like him to do should he get the opportunity is probably be a bit more adventurous, half the ball turn, lay a pass once a while or do, do it very often but take a shot once a while. I think he's got a very decent left foot on him. He needs to add that to his game. It, it provides a certain air of unpredictability that when yep. he turns and he's running you don't know whether he's going to shoot or pass or do something and that will add extra value to himself and by extension to Inter and, and to the Black Star. So I think he needs to go back to the craft, add a few more goals to his game. Deliberately, he <laughs> needs to hunt sometimes for the yeah. goals. But I think his technical abilities are never in doubt. If he's a bit more adventurous, I think he should, he should come out well. Now, this is a question I asked a few people, and I'm still asking. I, I want your thoughts. Yeah. If you were Kojo someone you knew that Cristiano Ronaldo was arriving in Juventus, how would that have affected your decision? Wow, well, it's a tough one. Um, you get the chance to, to play with well, one of the best players and defending yeah. Ballon d'Or winner. You know, I think that's what Ronaldo yeah. is now. Yeah. But think about it. Um, okay, Ronaldo is playing in a forward role. How much of an impact will that have on, on a left-sided player? Of course, of course, <laughs> you can't hide the fact that if he's playing there, say ahead of Alexandro, mm -hmm. and you have Ronaldo on the pitch and he's making those runs, you now need to th 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 dig through your toolkit and find a fantastic cross for him. Yeah. So it's a win-win situation for you. Juventus are finding goals. You are providing the assists. You are honing that side of your game. So it would have been great for him to stick around. But he had to look out for himself as a player. And who even knew? As of the time he took that decision, that Ronaldo, Ronaldo was going to So coming. it's always a very complex question. In hindsight, we always say it's 2020, but it he's is. taking a decision for him. And sometimes you need to look at yourself and take a decision that makes sense to you as a player and as a human being. And eventually it, it, it will come together. Well, interesting thoughts there on Kojo Asama. We have uh, just about two more players to discuss yep. on our list. Very interesting guys. Also, Daniel Amati of Leicester City. Every time I talk about him, I get a headache. Every time. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I didn't realize that winning a championship could turn out to become a curse. And that's what it looks like Danny Amate's situation has become. You, you are excited to leave Copenhagen and come to the Premier League because that's where everybody wants to play. You get the chance to win a championship, which probably won't happen in another 50 years for a team like Leicester City. But all of a sudden, your value as a footballer keeps declining and declining Excuse and me. declining by the week. He featured in a preseason game two days ago against Udinese in a game that had another Ghanaian international in Nicolas Opoku also. But, of course, Daniel Amate is our focus right about now. The season starts in just about, what, 10 days or so. Um, is it the time where he should be he should be knocking on a few doors and be requesting a few meetings on yeah. the clarity of his role as a player? I think so. I think he, he, had, he had last season to take that decision. And I still think it's very valid. He needs to take that decision. He needs mm. to ask the people at Leicester, do you have a use for me or not? If the answer is yes, let them prove it. If it's no, move on. If it's a maybe, move on. Because I, I think he's, he's, very, he's been, quote-unquote, happy with the situation. He's not pushed. The money's gets, good. If he gets to play, why not? He got the free car after winning the championship <laughs> you know, but, as well. But you players need to aim higher. You need mm. to think about your own 
career as a footballer. Think about it. He hasn't played active football in a while. If you were a crazy player, would you be giving him opportunities? I don't think so, especially not with what Kasim Nungu and co are doing, you know. So, Very true. Nicolas Opoku and co. So, he needs to ask himself, what hmm. am I doing at Leicester? If it's not working, he can move on. He can move on and get a very, very good team to play for because he needs to develop his own career. I think he needs to also understand what he's good at. This business of bumbling him about the back line, right back, centre back, number six. I don't, I don't get Maybe it. Maybe Manchester United will eventually purchase <laughs> Harry Maguire and open up the space that Daniel Martin Well, I mean, if he leaves, yes, that, that's a slot to fight for. Yeah. You know, but who are the players playing ahead of him? I think Amate should have been dislodging West Morgan by now. West Morgan has sentimental value for the club. But, but you know, when you when you can show what you can do, sentiment can only carry the other player so far. And I don't think he's shown enough what he can do. I mean, you spoke about playing for a better team, giving himself a better chance to succeed. What clubs represent a better opportunity for Daniel Amate for you? I, I don't think... He's suited for the game in England. I think the game in England is a bit too quick, a bit too physical for him. Mm. I think if he moved and he went to a place like France, I think he would, he would enjoy him, his, himself there. Um, back to Denmark, <laughs> I think that's a long shot. Portugal, yes. I think a place where the leagues are slower, and mm. he can have because he's not the greatest technically gifted player on the ball, yeah. and he's a little slower. He's, he can lose his bearings mm. like we've established a lot. Mm. I remember um, when Man United beat Leicester four yep. zero. In one of the goals, he was caught ball watching as they played squares around him, and you don't want that in 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 a player. You you want. Yeah him to be sharp. I mean, if you get beaten genuinely, that's fine. But I think he got into too many problem areas when he played for Leicester. Every single time he played, there, there wasn't that, that sense, certainty over his position. So I think France, is, France, looks, like, France looks like a good fit. No. Portugal maybe. I think his agent could have done a far better job of getting him out of this situation mm -hmm. and granting him minutes. See, the players develop and in terms of his own national team is important. He gets into a team that will give him minutes and he will get back to the top level. Well, let's talk about his ceiling as a player. Now, you look at what he's done with himself. Now, he's still pretty young. What does he have to improve about his game? Like I said, his uh, decision-making. He needs to be quick. Um, you don't want to squares to be played around you. Like think I'm on stab. your feet as he a player. He needs to think on his feet. He shouldn't be afraid of the tackle. I think that's where he gets it wrong. I think sometimes he can get a little like, excited, rush into a tackle and get it wrong. But his positioning... He needs to be a little quicker on the ball because if you are deployed, I think for Leicester, sometimes he was played as a six or in mm. that defensive midfield role. You need to be quick and your passing needs to be good that when you get the ball, it can it, it, it starts a process that ends in something. Yeah. I think that's what N'Golo Kante had at Leicester and he made them take that. The drink water had the 40 yard drink water pass to Vardy. Yeah. Yeah. Wilfred Ndidi may not be the greatest passer, but he provides this buzz where he takes the ball. He's already on the move and can lay it on for somebody else to do the business. And then you've got Vincent Ibarra, who came in from the Spanish League. And we all know what that means. Better passer of the ball. So I think Amato needs to yeah. work on the technical parts of his game, the passing, the attention to detail, spotting danger, yeah. breaking up play, and letting it be quick. I think that he encapsulates everything. He needs to be quicker on the ball and a bit more dynamic in what he does. Well, this is to digress a little, but still on the subject. Now, the English Premier League has been a coveted ground for, I mean, many a footballer yeah. and even a lot of Ghanaian footballers. I've spoken to Thomas Partey in recent times. He's not hidden his admiration. Our friend Duncan, they've all spoken about playing in the Premier League. Now, Daniel Amati represents a small fraction of Ghanaians who play in the Premier League. He's warming the bench like we've discussed already. I mean, what was it about the days of Muntari and Essien <laughs> and the likes who featured prominently week in, week out. We didn't have to lose sleep over whether Essien was making a team sheet or not. I mean, how has the narrative changed so drastically? I think players like Montari and Essien possessed probably, I think the greatest commodity in the Premier League, the physicality, mm. especially in their positions. And, you know, mid central midfield areas in, in the Premier League can be really tough. Yeah. I mean, you, if you look at if you do, do a cross-section or if you analyse the kind of midfield in England now, yeah. you've got the very tall but strong Paul Pogba, the very small but still strong in Golo Kante. You've got Eric Dyer yeah. who knows how to throw himself the about. Guy. Yes, he knows how to throw himself about every now and again. There's Musa Dembele and you can tell. And the you've got Wanyama. It's built players who are built like tanks and you bounce off them. <laughs> and, you know, stuff like that. 
the challenge is that I don't think we have enough Ghanaian players who can fit into those roles. And if, mm. even, even if they are a different kind of player, who are they better than? That's always a big question. Yeah, that's the question. You, okay, who are you better than? If, if Liverpool plays you in their midfield, are you better than Fabinho or Naby Keita? I mean, look at Idris Agana Gay. You can tell that he's still a few levels yeah. below your prime midfielder. He, he's great, can destroy the play, but you can tell that he lacks tactical discipline. He gets overexcited in the tackle. And when you look across, players like Fernandinho, N'Golo Kante, I mentioned Pogba, Pogba yeah. Christian Eriksen. Um, there's more that? than just strength and so physicality in the game. There's, there's a certain intelligence about yeah. playing in those central midfield roles. And I, and I think a lot of our players either have the intelligence but not the physicality or maybe the passing range is a bit too short yeah. or they are not exciting. And they look like one of the many other players. Hmm. And you need to really, really identify yourself but on the, on, on the flip side, though, I'm happy that even if they are not fitting what is demanded in the Premier League, I think that they are fitting elsewhere. You look at Italy. Yeah. You find that some of our best players in, in Italian football are central midfielders. Right? Sure. Duncan. Sure. Um, as remember, used to play there. Godfrey Donsa is, is in there. Koja Samoa yeah. is in there. So even if they are not working well in England, you can tell that in Italy, those positions are there. But if I want to expand a greater conversation about player quality and all, I do pray that we do find hmm. a fantastic goal scorer somewhere around. Because I, apart from Jan, you, stra you scratch your head to find who can lead Black Stars, right, into hmm. a game and can provide the team with enough hope and a proper goal threat. I think we've got players who can do every other thing, run around, cut in, do whatever. But we're actually lacking a proper, proper proper finisher. I look at Rafael Jamina and he still comes across a player who'd want to play I, wide, I, I, drop was, deep, the only touch guy the I was ball, thinking yeah, about the whole the time ball. he was and speaking. All, I think he really needs to morph into that role. You know, and he's physical enough, he has, he's big enough. Become that kind of number nine that the Black Stars are like. But I'm sure that's a conversation for another day. Well, Rafael Jamina was inching towards the Premier League just a few months ago until cardiac issues would just not let the man be great. Hopefully, hopefully he can just recalibrate his path and end up in the Premier League someday because Ghana really is lacking that presence that we require. We thought that Dani Amate would be the source of that sort of inspiration in the Premier League. It was not to be, but um, the tracker is still on. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and then we'll wrap up with our final player of the day. You've forgotten about him. He was once upon a time playing for Asante Kotoko. It wasn't too long ago, but... This time around, he's playing his trade in the Belgian Pro League. I'll be telling you about our last player when we come back. Regular news checks as they unfold. 2020 news, all day, all the time. Politics, sports, entertainment, business, and more. 2020 news, we bring you the world in 20 minutes. And that's all the news in 20 minutes. Tune in to The Point of View, Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. as Bernard Avlet takes the news further. He will bring the right guests, ask them the relevant questions, and get you the real insights you need on the big stories for the day. The Point of View with Bernard Avle, Monday and Wednesday nights, only on CTTV. You're still watching the tracker here on City TV. Welcome back to the final lap of the show. And the last chap we have to talk about, Nathan, is Dauda Mohammed. Dauda Mohammed left Asante Kotoko not too long ago, just about a year and a half or two years ago. Speedster with an eye for goal. He's, he scored already 
um, for his club side Anderlecht in the Belgian Pro League opener against Cotteridge Club. Um, well, he's, he's one guy a lot of people have forgotten about yeah. already, but yeah. he showed a lot of promise when he left the shores of Ghana. How highly do you rate Dauda Mohamed? Um... I mean, if I had to give him a rating over 10, probably five and a half. Five and a half? Not because he's a bad player. Five but, and a half is not bad, I'll take it. It's average, I'll take it. But I'm, I'm yet to be blown away mm. by... Um, Even by when his, he was down here? Yes, I, 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 mean, I thought he had great pace. I don't know why he played that contract. I thought he gave the, the contract for attack an interesting dynamic. He was really quick, and so it was nice to play him against defences that played high. You can find yeah. him behind the line and all of that. It's taking him time to get the big shots at mm. Anderlecht, and I'm happy he's taking it. He's growing or he's developing in a setting that allows young players to thrive. Yep. I mean, the likes of <clears throat> can go back to Anderlecht elite scoring that like Romelu Lukaku before. In they have tons I mean, of legendary strikers. Before. You've got all kinds of great players who yeah. have gone through. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Even Ghana's own Odate Latte. Yeah, the yeah and Co. play there. So he needs to take those opportunities. He's at, like I said, he, he has a chance to develop and grow. But whenever I hear his name, I always think about the, the battle back in Ghana about the clubs who are scrambling for a share of his transfer fee. Well, Santi Kotoko is one. Uh, is he Unista? I can't a remember. A lot of other lot teams of clubs are always hoping jumping. to get a bite of the cake. You know, so, so, I mean, he's left and teams yeah. are still going back and forth about the money. But he needs to take this opportunity. You know, I repeat this with players because really, that is the long and short of these chances you get. That if you are giving enough faith mm -hmm. by a manager to say, I'm putting you in the first team. He's telling you that prove me wrong or right, depending on my argument. Because there's probably somebody high up the team's management who may not think you are good enough. Mm. And the manager is hoping that you can prove him right, that you are this good to play. And if it's at Anderlecht, I think he has a great chance to grow and develop. Um, I'm happy he's getting the games. Long may they continue. He needs to score the goals. I hope. And that's the thing with playing, with, you know, playing in better conditions. That when you get called to play for your country, let us see your improvement. We cannot see down at Mohammed play for any of the national teams and he's still the same player he was when he left. No, mm. we should see some improvement. So I hope he's taking his opportunities. And like I said, long may the games come in and long may he find goals to score. And long may you have football wisdom to share with us. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan, for sharing your thoughts with us on the tracker. Like I always say, regardless of where the player is hiding in the world, we will find him on this show. My name is Benjamin Inketi. It's been fun coming your way with the tracker. Next week, we'll be back with a lot more. Tune in to The Point of View, Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. as Bernard Avlet takes the news further. He will bring the right guests, ask them the relevant questions, and get you the real insights you need on the big stories for the day. What one action have you taken? What one statement have you issued? Well, we, we've been issuing statements, even this... Um, no, on the specific issue of... This very one. Of, of, of no bed cases. syndrome. Since, since you're saying that you've had this before, well, we keep talking. The Point of View with Bernard Avle, Monday and Wednesday nights, only on CTTV. The City FM Literacy Challenge is back. Are you a GHS student? Are you willing to contribute to change? What would you do if you were the president of Ghana? Do you want to win a whopping 10,000 Ghana CDs? If yes, then participate in the Literacy Challenge 2018. Level 1. The year is 2035. The law allows people below age 40 to contest their presidency. As a presidential candidate in a general election, in no less than 600 words, write your manifesto speech. Remember, letter must be in your own handwriting. Must be endorsed by a parent or guardian. In, add your full contact details and post to the Literacy Challenge, PO Box 
GP14123 across Central. Or drop it off at the front desk of City FM at the Braca behind the police station. Level 2. The top 50 students selected from all over Ghana shall take a written general knowledge quiz. And finally, level 3. The top 10 students shall compete in the classic quiz competition to win the ultimate prize of 10,000 Ghana CDs. The Literacy Challenge is powered by 97.3 City FM and sponsored by Data Bank Edifund and MoneyGram with support from City TV. Closing date for entries is Friday, 10th August 2018. Call 0205-973-973 for more inquiries. Terms and conditions apply. For regular news checks as they unfold, 2020 News, all day, all the time. Politics, sports, entertainment, business and more. 2020 News, we bring you the world in 20 minutes. And that's all the news in 20 minutes. Go. Spend 30 minutes every weekday catching up with all the trending social media conversations of the day. If you tweet it, we'll read it. We might just even Skype you. Just, you know, no matter your situation, you can rise to the top. Absolutely. You really and can. And it's interesting that he wrote this article on the 17th of June. And on the 18th of June, yesterday, he actually scored two goals Woo! in the Belgium World Cup meet. 30 minutes is all it takes, so use the hashtag 30minutes on social media to catch our attention. Join the most interactive social media TV show weekdays at 5 p.m. only on City TV. Wherever the weekend sporting action happened, we will bring it to you here on Scorecard. Every goal, every dunk, every punch, the winning strides, and the winning volleys. Come international media, he said, look, wait, sit and wait. Let me have a meal with my people. <laughs> and I think that that's the same cool, it's the same organization he brings to the field every time I've seen him play. He looks to me like somebody who has played over 50 cups already. Okay. But this guy has barely played over 25 cups for the national team. All of the weekend's action in one place. Scorecard every Sunday at 7.30 p.m. prompt on City TV. It's engaging, detailed, and loaded with factual and incisive analysis. It's The Big Issue, your preferred Saturday morning news and current affairs analysis program on City TV. Tune in this and every Saturday at 9 a.m. and hear the newsmakers discuss the top issues for the week. At that time, at that time, Charlotte was complete. I'm not defending Charlotte. I'm, 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 I'm talking about...